welcome back to Styles Rumble Legs Part 2. In the first half, we sort of set up our leg system here. We got all our pivot points set up. We got all our art put in. And our knees are pretty much working just because they're fairly simple. They're just straight up and down leg. And now we're going to work on patching these hips. So these hips are going to be harder than those hips. I'll just move those over here. So this is the rig version. This is just the art so that I can have the keys on the same one. Having this curve automatically adds a little bit of a problem because in a, a boy butt, you can get away with a less aesthetically pleasing butt. Whereas the the girl butts, like when you have these big curves, it's a little bit more difficult. And see this, I would think is a little bit high. It still might need adjusting. And that's one thing that is almost impossible to get away from. Like you, if you're thinking that when you rig it, it should be immediately perfect when you animate it like this, that is not necessarily the case. It may need a little bit of extra work. So here in my keys, in my walk cycle, you can see that for the most part, my keys are just on the main action. So I've got my key here, my key there, and I don't have a lot of keys in between except for specific instances. So here the hips needed a little bit more guidance than just auto tweening. I may have needed to skew it into place or just like patched up these little seams, but it won't necessarily get a clean look just automatic. Of course, the simpler the character, the less extra work there is to get it working as you would want it to. So don't feel like you're striving for absolute perfection because it's really, I don't, I don't think it's possible. In order to get it to be perfect, I think you'd have to add way more pieces that's feasible to still be like functional. One of the first things I want to get working is when the top leg is in the front like this, I want it to go over that fork, but I don't necessarily want to bring this leg way to the front. Like, because if I bring it way to the front, it's, you're, we're gonna have a bigger patching problem in, in the long run. So what I'm gonna do instead is add a little overlay and I've already got the overlay here. So the lower leg and the upper leg each have an overlay that's going ahead of anything I think should be going behind. And then the leg itself is going into the back. So the leg is behind all of this pelvis stuff. And I'm going to add the piece that I think needs an overlay. So here I'm going to go up until the fork, copy it and paste that onto my overlay layer. Now when I bring this forward, it's going to cut the fork. In this instance, when I pull it forward, it's not quite doing what I need it to do. And if this is a homebrew design, I might just decide that I want my fork to go over like this because I've rigged and designed this character myself. I can move that over and it's going to be a little bit cleaner when it rotates. Extend this overlay, that's a solution. And it'll look okay. That's what I did on this one. Because of the shape of this leg, I was able to do that and it cleaned up the fork no problem. This one doesn't want to seem to work in the same way. So we may actually need to have a drawing substitution to go over this. Alternatively, if you're designing a character for a Tomb Boom rig and that's something you might want to keep in mind for your three quarter view is that if you have this fork line up with this line, it's going to be a little bit easier to patch. If we get designer art and the fork is closer over to this way and we can't just simply put an overlay in, we might actually need to use drawing substitutions there. The leg can get a little bit longer. Or we could put in an animatable patch. So we can take this leg and grab our overlay and use one of our other layers, like our underlayer layer hasn't been used yet. And we can use our layer selectors to put our underlay layer in the front for the rest of our art and give ourselves a little patch. Copy paste, bonus peg. So now we've got our little overlay and we can put that on top of our pelvis. So if I put it in here, this is being run through the pelvis cutter. It's only gonna be visible on the pelvis. I'm not sure if that's the best solution. It may or may not be. But now when we bring our leg forward, we have a little leg extension that we can animate up or we can do drawing substitutions on a little bit of a smaller scale here. Bloop. So now we have a little bit of an overlay available if it's needed. And then if we don't need it, we pull it back down and it's not visible. You might need to put a handle on it to make it a little bit more user friendly, but that's one option. Another simple option is just when the leg comes forward like this, you may even just want to 
bring your pelvis to go with it a little bit, kind of shimmy it around so that when the leg comes forward, you're bringing the, the fork around with the leg. So here in my character's walk cycle, you can see that the fork is being skewed a little bit just so that it gives the illusion that the hips are turning and it gives a little bit more life to it. This belt is super flat, so it makes the pelvis look really flat. If you threw a deformer in there, you could get some like rounder looking shapes out of it without having to do any drawing substitutions. If you're, if you're looking to get a real 3D look out of a 2D show, which is very common nowadays. Here, because this leg is a little bit wider, this pelvis, I might actually just pop this bum onto two pieces. I'm gonna go into my drawing view and I'm gonna put my left butt cheek on the line and my right butt cheek, I'm gonna pop that over onto my color and go through all my views and make sure that these are working. Now, in this case, I'm going to put the left butt cheek on the color art because it's going to be behind and we already get that free leveling with these, these drawings. We might find out that we need to keep the left butt cheek on the left and the right butt cheek on the right more stringently, but because they're so close together, obvious fitness of our character and his tight butt cheeks, I think that we can get away with switching them in just a line in the color art to get our layering because this butt cheek is going to be on top, so then we're going to have to put the right one on the bottom. And so you want to draw behind your butt cheek so that you've got extra cheek in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to copy paste and give this one I'm going to keep as my master peg. And then I'm going to give each of these another one. Now I have to put a new one here boop, and a new one there. Plug them in and then grab my layer selectors, line and color. Boop. and have this guy be the line in the front and the color in the back. And then of course we need butt pivot points. Boop. There we go. So now if we get a weird situation like this where our leg is sticking out a little farther than we want, we can manipulate our butt cheek, clean that up, or we could of course bring this in a little bit or adjust our pivot point if we want it to look a certain way. But now we have enough customizable butt area that we could clean a lot of these up just by sneaking through a little butt skew here. Or if this leg needs to go back the other way, we can grab our top butt cheek and bring it forward on our Z axis. Boop. So now we have this customizable little cheek and we could, if we wanted to, add drawing substitution and make sure that we're getting our perspective on there. If our leg needs to come back like this, add a little cheek in there. Some so now our butt cheek's getting obscured here because we've got an overlay on this leg. So we just go back to our other drawing substitution that doesn't have an overlay. Make sure that those are working out okay. And now this leg, of course, will need the same thing. So I'll shift D to get another drawing substitution. And then make sure that when you create a drawing substitution, it'll kind of extend the exposure along there. So make sure that you've gone back to the leg that you absolutely want over here. Light table. Cut. Oops, copy and paste. Now this leg is going to go ahead of this fork, no problem. And this this looks okay. Oops, so I might want to clean up that seam. So the good thing about these deformer pelvises, or when you're doing like full sequential stuff, you might not need to skew as much to get stuff into place. Well, I mean, you have like an unlimited amount of adjustableness for getting these seams to be perfect in each frame. Here, we're going to need the drawing substitution leg there. See how that works. So this side leg might need another drawing substitution that has a higher overlay. So I'm going to give that one a new substitution. And this part of rigging is really just guess and check. So I want my overlay to go right up to the fork here. I'm going to copy and paste that on my overlay layer. And as simple as that, because I have it pre-made, the front is already looking a little bit better. And the back, we need to shave a bunch off. Bloop. So we need one in the front, but not necessarily in the back. That's okay. Our patches don't need to be even. All right, so our butt might need some help here. I've got the line and the color art used. So I'm going to use the, I'll use the underlay. And I'm going to give this a line. I only need this on my side views. I may decide that I want to change the entire shape of this pelvis, but let's just give it a try for now. Oh, let me grab an underlay. 
add to the pelvis. And I want it to go between the leg and the pelvis. Here's where my leg connects, and here's my pelvis display. And so if we put it here, it should be visible. So obviously our guy wasn't animated into place to support this <laughs> just yet, but we can animate it now and just get it looking like we want. And this is why you might need to actually change the pelvis a little bit more substantially. So here our pelvis. Mm, we might just be able to get away with the line. We have to be a little bit more careful when we set up these envelope deformers. Ooh, don't be lazy like me or you'll get a mess. D -d -d. And now that overlay we only want to show when the leg isn't there, so I'm going to just put a cutter on it. Okay, so now our pelvis is a little bit more showing here, but that's not going to affect our other views. It's only in that one view it's going to change. And of course, because this is, has a deformer on it, if they want to line this up a little bit more carefully, that's an option. And the other side, you do the exact same thing. When we pull this forward, we can't say that both of these legs are cutting this line or it won't show up ever. So what we have to do on the other side is I'm going to use Instead of the underlay, we still have our overlay available. And I'm going to use an overlay selector. Boop. So here's the underlay we created for the other side. And here's our overlay. And we're going to plug it into the same space. And we can use a little comp to sort that out. And now use our other leg. Now add another cutter. But this leg's cutting this one. And then, of course, we need to animate it so it looks nicer. This is why I said that I could get a, I could definitely get away with more than four layers here because we already used four layers for this pelvis. So if we need any more layers, what's this guy doing? Because if we if we need anything else to here add here, we we just there's, there's nothing left in the tank. You guys, we've completely run out of spaces. <laughs> so we can take a look at our lady leg. Okay, so this leg is set up in the same way. I pull it forward, and I have to pull this in a little bit, just because that the size difference between this pelvis is uh, a little bit too serious to to get totally automated. But you can see with a little bit of tweaking, like here, it might need just whoop, little sort of stuff like that. Then this is working pretty well. So that's looking okay. And then if these legs need to be reversed so that this leg is in the front, you just change the drawing substitutions so that your nub is in the back. And now this leg is coming forward. And we can do a little bit of foreshortening. And your leg is now coming forward. So you may need drawing subs here from time to time, or you might need subs to get this working a little bit differently, but overall it's a decent sort of a setup. And the way we test our our legs is to just space these keys out. And there's a few little things that need to be fixed up. Just some of the tweens aren't quite white lined up where they, they look nice. That's just a little bit of busy work and animation to get it. Here we go. A sort of leg situation. So this is painful to make. I don't know if I can make this more streamlined, this sort of series. Uh, it's just a lot of guess and check, really. You, as you, the more rigs you do, the more likely you are to guess sooner. So when possible, try and make good design choices if you're doing your own stuff. Like make sure that your fork is ahead of your leg so that you can rotate and have like a sensible overlay here. Because if this was designed like that, then this is automatically going to be a much bigger problem. You might need to put in um, 
a movable patch or you'd have to put in a deformer there so that you can adjust the way this line connects here or move this a lot more like it's just it's going to be more tedious trying to find a way to make that look nice without adding a lot of drawings because nowadays that's kind of what rigs go for it the least amount of drawing possible so you just want everybody to animate as fast as possible but i don't think there's a, a way to do this perfectly there might be um, someone out there might be looking at this and thinking oh my god that's the worst thing i've ever seen why don't you do it this way better way but each pelvis is going to be very unique to itself you might have two or three characters on a show with different pants. It di need different treatments. If you don't have a zip at all, I mean, that immediately causes less problems because the where this comes out is not a factor anymore because you can use an overlay to get it on top of your fork, and that's not really a problem compared to a zip. Like, just adding the zipper automatically causes more problems. Wee, where are you going, zipper? That's a crazy place. Things like pockets, butt pockets... Uh, but cheeks adds a layer of complexity that will can, can potentially cause you problems. So I think the moral of the story is to use those circles as best you can to try and help find the pivot points early on and then animate your stuff into place and then once you've got everything worked you can work on the patches in here. I don't know if this was helpful at all. I hope it was. But I gotta go because my boy just wake up from his nap. So thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully if you're not completely turned off by the legs.